Alright. So I've been getting questions lately for some reason, like out of nowhere, about growth hormone. The different kinds, what they do, why they're are different types of growth hormone the whole nine yards which ones are good which ones aren't so I decided I'd just make a list and uh, probably be the best way that I could effectively help you so HGH is human growth hormone human growth hormone is a hundred and ninety one chain amino acid peptide now it has massive benefits throughout the body it's what we know as a master hormone this uh, basically means that a master hormone is a hormone that controls other hormones. It literally um, keeps everything in balance. Bodybuilders use it to make more effective their other hormones. It by itself is not wildly anabolic except for in mass dosing, and it's still not wildly anabolic without taking other anabolics. It would be a great complement to any cycle because it's going to make the whole, what you would call a, um, the whole cascade of hormones to work better. It is one of the originators from the pituitary, therefore it controls a lot of other hormones in the in the playing out of its actions. These 191 amino acid chain peptides, peptide chains, have been taken apart as to say they have been all used for different things. Growth hormone is so vast in its ability to help in different areas from your cartilage to fat loss to like AOD is going to be the part that helps with um, losing fat or making fat where it can't absorb any more um, energy because fat cells store sugar. They don't store fat. You know, fat doesn't make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. Overeating makes you fat. Calories make you fat if you want to get technical. But insulin's job is to store what you eat into a fat cell or to shove it into the muscle for its use. That's why insulin is so anabolic. Growth hormone is going to be the controller and it is the part of growth hormone, AOD, is the part that causes the fat cell to collapse. All right. Now, you got all the different uh, peptides that they make are all generally made from a growth hormone. Now, how is growth hormone made? It's two ways. Uh, growth hormone can be made from E. coli. Um, they literally alter E. coli somehow to make a synthetic form of growth hormone, which is going to be about 2,200 or 22,125 Daltons, right? Now, next is the actual growth hormone that they now take. They don't take them from humans anymore because that gets dangerous. Um, but they can derive them from uh, well, your D. Uh, there's a specific way they put this. It's important. Oh. Uh, Close the purest form of HGH to see each other. This one is derived from uh, the cell lines of some animal. I don't know. Um, nonetheless, what you can expect from these different types of growth hormone, well, you've got like ANSA. These are different brands. They're not different types. There's not different kinds. But what you have is whole bunch of black market might be tainted, might be screwed up. And then you've got growth hormone secretagogues and growth hormone precursors and growth hormone peptides, which this is not going to get confusing at all. So basically, 
look at it like this. You've got these different brands. These are some of your better brands, uh, except for this one is a black market China I wouldn't mess with. That's Rip Tropin. You've got uh, Sazian is USA made. It's good, it's expensive. You got uh, another black market, it's Thai Tropin. Your best, most pure forms of growth hormone are going to be your uh, and someone, and some, and someone. They're all somatotropins per se. Hypotropin, um, and then you've got Humatrope has mixed. It's Eli Lilly's. I mean, it has United States is where it's made. These others are almost all made in China or Russia. You will not hardly find a growth hormone made anywhere else. I think there is. Um, some made in Mexico, but I'm not sure that I would trust Mexico anymore. I trust China in making certain things. And this really needs to be made properly. Um, it is a very delicate balance in how you make these 191 peptide chain amino acids. It's not something you just willy-nilly throw together like kind of, hopefully we got it 40% right or something. Growth hormones... <laughs> kind of more than just a little complicated. Let's put it that way. So these are going to be, what's going to happen? And how do these compete? Or how would your secretagogues, for instance, compete with growth hormone? It's a good question. So what you've got is your secretagogues are going to be, uh, and if you need actual growth hormone, there is a way to get it um, with a permission from a cool doctor that we know. Um, S-E-T-H-N-H-C at A-T-T dot net. I've got a source that will help you with the doctor and the whole nine yards and getting approved and getting it to you. Um, S-E-T-H-N-H-C at A-T-T dot net. You know my information. Now, um, how does it compare with, let's say, MK677? Well, MK677 is a secretagogue forcing the pituitary to produce more growth hormone. It's actually a mimic of ghrelin. You produce growth hormone when your stomach growls, right? Well, ghrelin making you hungry, causing stomach to growl or being that hormone that mimics that, is going to force higher production of our own growth hormone. Now, why would we want this? No worries about black market. Um, it's much more easily made. It's a much more basic compound. It's going to be your own growth hormone. 191 chain peptide amino acid is going to be so hard to make that the different brands have different effects a little bit. The reason being is we are human and we're not as good as God made our body to produce. So it's close but not quite. MK677 is preferable because it's our own growth hormone. We don't have to worry about the side effects. We don't have to worry about your freaking forehead growing or your hands getting too big, which can happen in mass dose growth hormone, not in regular doses. And honestly, it's so expensive. You're looking at $1,000 a month for, from the doctor, United States growth hormone, all right? Now, with MK677, you got MK677 would last 90 days, per se, taking one a day. Not, but MK677 is not for human consumption. You can't get it unless you get it from a doctor or you go to newsarms.com and you're doing research for research purposes because it is not for humans. But you get a 90 day supply for like 100 bucks as compared to growth hormone, all your HGH will end up being like $1,000 a month from your doctor. Unless you know somebody. Um, MK677, 100 days supply, that's going to be at least three months for 100 bucks. This, now what will happen when they approve MK677 for human use? 
then it'll go up to a thousand dollars a month because that's what the medical profession or the pharmaceutical industry does to you. It costs eleven dollars to make a treatment of chemotherapy. Eleven dollars. <clears throat> Anybody pay $25 for Viagra? It costs two cents to make one. Two pennies. $25 a pill. We ain't trying that. So, MK677 being a the strongest, the most potent growth hormone releasing product that has been made to date, bar none, ain't found anything else that even compares. Now, you do have your peptides, GHRP, GHRP6, GHRP2. GHRP6 is awesome. You can eat a full meal and use a nasal applicator for GHRP6 and you'd be starving to death in five minutes. Says my research animal because it's not for human consumption. But you have um, CJC that you can add to them to make them last longer. You have different... Um, different peptides that are GH related, but none of them are going to be MK677. And MK677 is only going to take you to your highest possible production of growth hormone by your pituitary. It's not taking you over and above, whereas you can inject growth hormone to mass amounts till you get side effects. Now, what are the benefits of growth hormone? Well, according to Dr. Ronald Klatz, it's ain't me saying this, it's Ronald Klatz, he says that patients experience better skin, better hair, better nails, increase in muscle mass by 11% with no change in diet or exercise over a six month period, and a 7% loss in fat with no change in diet or exercise over a six month period. You get better sexual function, better cognitive ability. You get, um, basically, growth hormone is the hormone that is produced in mass when we are born. It is the reason we form kneecaps. It is the reason you grow cartilage. It will help the body to rebuild and repair like you were a kid again. With that said, if you get too much, there's problems. And you can only get it through your doctor. But it is what we call the fountain of youth hormone. The, you know, all your movie stars, they go to, like, Mexico and get their growth hormone. And they'll bring it back with them. Now, that's not exactly legal, but that's how they do it so that they can stay looking like they're 15 for their whole life. That is their key to youth. Epitalin is another one that you might want to look at if you're looking for youthful vibrance. But anyway, MK677 is going to be all the benefits with minimal side effects. Now, here's the caveat. There is one thing that you always have to remember. If you are diabetic, you do not even smell MK677. As a matter of fact, it seems to be more tolerant than growth hormone would actually be tolerated a little better than MK677. I'm not sure why. It may be because ghrelin causes the drop in blood sugar whenever the stomach growls. But whatever the case may be, it is, MK677 is wildly dangerous for the diabetic and pre-diabetic. So be, it's not wildly dangerous. It drops your blood sugar. Um, it causes blood sugar Growth hormone competes with insulin for receptors. So you have to be aware of that. If you cover all your receptors, that insulin we go in with this growth hormone flood, if you're diabetic, you have problems. If you're not diabetic, you've got plenty of beta islet cells, you've got plenty of receptors. We don't worry about that. But for those who are diabetic or pre-diabetic, now, here's another caveat. Every single cell in the human body, every soft cell tissue is replaced every 11 months, okay? Essentially, what happened with my research animal is he started taking MK677, and he had to drop down. He, took, he started with 30 milligrams, and it threw him into hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia or whatever the heck it was, and he would get shaky, and 
he could feel his pituitary pulse like every few hours. And then he would get weak and shake and have to go eat. So he was like, like, oh God, you did it this time. But what happened is he lowered dose and he went down to 10 or he went down to 20 milligrams per day. Taking it night before bed is the best time to take it simply because growth hormone is released in mass amounts when we're in stage four sleep. If you want to repair, that's when you take it. So he started there and he did that for about a month and then he went down to 10 milligrams for about six or seven months. And then he started noticing those feelings again. So he went down to 10 milligrams every other day and for a full duration of 16 months. Now, the reason this happened, that only conclusion that I can come to that he kept getting more and more growth hormone with less and less MK677 is the pituitary gland producing this GH, right? Well, every 11 months, the body's been changing out cells, so it's been rebuilding. Well, the pituitary gland got used to producing a certain amount of growth hormone, and it actually now produces mo all the growth hormone that he would have been getting taking MK677, but he doesn't have to take it because his body has made that the homeostasis. So homeostasis being the balance that our body sees, once growth hormone levels have been boosted by a something like a mimic, then over time the pituitary creates a balance a homeostasis of creating that amount of growth hormone then it just continues if the body's had the raw materials necessary to rebuild the pituitary which would be found in a product called restore which my research animal takes every night so remember research chemicals are not for human consumption they're not to be eaten they're not to be snorted they're not to be banged they're not to be insulated they're not to be uh, gazed upon too long. They're not covered by GEICO. They're not going to be covered by your homeowner's insurance, but they are only able to be sold to you as research chemicals. Any supplement I talk about has not been evaluated by the FDA, the ATF, NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, and they are not intended to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any or cause any disease. All that we guarantee is what's on the label is in the bottle. So you can go to newsarms.com, check that out. I hope that clarifies about growth hormone, which kind you get really don't matter as long as you're not getting the black market BS kinds, okay? Beyond that, uh, and, some, and someone, that one, humotrope or hypertropin, these are good. Um, Sazian, um, Strong tropin, I'd be kind of worried about that one. Nordotropin is awesome. Um, gentropin and uh, Stacy. Those are going to be your main ones. So you've got this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I would stick with those brands simply because the other ones we just don't know what we don't know and it don't take but one screw up and your research animal will not be happy. These over here I cannot tell you about um, because that's against uh, good practices according to the tube. So I'll just leave that there and see, you know, you might want to get a close up, take a picture. Um, so you got, that pretty much covers everything. Personally, I prefer MK677 if it were legal for me to take, but since it's not, my research animal uses that as opposed to a synthetic form or an outside source of GH that may screw him up. So just something for future reference. When that becomes legal, you could ask your doctor about it maybe <coughs> 20 years. Um, so anyway, love y'all. Peace.